hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome so today we're talking about dealing with unmet expectations especially in relationship context yeah i'm going to be talking as you can see from the title below i'm going to be talking about this story that i heard of a babe she said that um she liked this guy he was of a different faith from her she was a christian her parents are christians but she liked this guy that had a different faith from her and then her parents said no because it was of another fit and she felt he was a kind guy he was cool it was all right so why did her parents disagree anyway she doesn't he begs and begs but her parents say no so she, she had to say no i think her parents are pastors and then she lets him go the guy goes ahead marries someone else and years down the line i think her dad is now dead and she is not married yet while the guy is married already and he seems like he's enjoying the marriage and she can she she feels like she regrets not going ahead she regrets um obeying her parents that if she was in the marriage right now with the guy the guy she would have been you know doing well for herself because the guy's marriage looks okay it looks like everything is fine like the guy is enjoying his marriage and she feels like because at that time the guy told her that don't worry, you can serve your own God. I'll serve my own God. I'm willing to marry. And she felt like the guy was not really like a staunch, you know, the other religion. I don't want to mention it. And she she felt that she would have done a good job marrying the guy. So now she the point now is that she she's filled with regret because she's not married yet. The guy is already married. And the parents that told her not to marry are no more here. Like, should she just have disobeyed them? Right? She feels bad. What do I think? <laughs> First question, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. But yeah, this kind of things, this kind of thing happens a lot. It happens every now and then. I think that one of the the best things, best decisions I made for myself was having the belief early that God does not work in the way that I think he works in my head right <laughs> you know the way they say life does not work the way you think it works in your head no exactly god does not handle things the way you think that he's supposed to handle things i made myself understand early that karma does not work with god right god is a good and loving god the way is good and loving to you is the way it's good and loving to your enemy so i think also understanding salvation faith you know the way the whole new covenant be is that shaped a lot for me you know in my faith so it made me realize that god is not making enemies of my enemies right my enemies are also praying to god <laughs> that is a shocker god is not making enemies of your enemies tweet that <laughs> and i mean this in a good way i know that some people can say that oh but god rose up against you know the enemies of israelites against egypt against pharaoh that is in another different context god was telling pharaoh to let his people go and also that was a type and shadow of us being delivered from the power of darkness can i get an amen <laughs> my point is yes god can fight your battles but that is from a different context it's not in context of you were dating someone the person broke your heart then you think that god is going to punish the person i think i i, I immediately i zeroed my mind from this thinking a long time ago that god's going to punish my exes it's not true god's not going to punish your exes because even you yourself you're not so righteous and holy there's someone you have said no to that the person was heartbroken there's someone that you've you know most likely like even you think that you're morally upright but even you with your best good behavior you're still not someone's ideal right you're still someone has you are still offended someone so don't think that oh god's going to you know rise up and start killing all your exes no some of your exes are going to get married before you and they might even have a good marriage well it depends on what your context of good marriage is but i just have to set that foundation first before i go into this lady's situation so dear poster i want you to know that dear lady wherever you are and of course you might not be watching this but i know that there'll be other people that will learn from this wherever you are always know just know that god doesn't do vengeance the way we think that he does it he's a good god he makes rain and sunshine on both the poor the rich the wicked the humble everything yeah he does <laughs> um but 
that being said, the next point I want to talk about now is what is your idea of a good marriage? You may think that your ex is having a great time in his marriage, but you may be wrong. People are pretending all the time. Just because someone is posting on social media like, oh, as I am like this now, you're watching this. Well, my background is not so beautiful, but you're watching this background now. You're watching me looking nice. You don't know what I'm wearing under. <laughs> if I show you what I'm wearing under, you'll be shocked. <laughs> right i'm wearing a nice jacket on top on top and a nice wig you can I'm, this is what i want you to see this part but you're not seeing the under you're not seeing what is behind me if you know how scattered it is behind this you don't know right i'm not saying it's scattered i'm not saying it's not scattered but i'm just saying that you don't know you don't know the behind this thing you only see physical you only see what they show you so just because someone is posting that it doesn't mean that the marriage is going well. You don't know if he's slapping her. You don't know if she's not happy. You don't know. Okay, so I want you to have that on your mind that someone's marriage looks like it's going well. Looks like, oh, I lost such a great man. It's not true. God will give you your own person. Everybody will have their own person. So please relax, okay? Stop comparing your... Like some people now, they're always comparing their relationship to another person's relationship. Simply because the other person's relationship has an Instagram page. And you, your husband doesn't even want to snap with you. So you're like, my husband is not romantic. Rest. <laughs> and while, yeah, marriage, yes. Some of us are enjoying marriage, right? I'm not saying that marriage is like hard rock. But what I'm speaking to, you judging based on just what you're saying, is not always white and black. Back to like the first, the way I started. I started with saying that God, you know, does not judge people the way you think he judges people in your head. You have to understand that whatever good you're doing as a believer, as a Christian, you must understand that you are doing it for your God. You are doing it because you love God. And I say this to especially people who are like virgins or people like who are celibate. Don't say, oh, I I'm saying virgin because I know that God's going to reward me with a good man. My dear you may be disappointed, okay? And I'm not saying this because God is not going to give you a good man. But if you don't open your eyes, shine your eye to do and um, make certain wise decisions, just because you're a virgin is not enough for the marriage to be blissful. That is not even enough. It's not even a criteria, being a virgin. <laughs> I'm not even speaking from a place of beef. If you don't know, for those of us who, for those of you who know my channel from beginning, beginning, you know that I have jurisdiction in this matter, okay? As someone who has... Um, who got married without penetration. You know, they say you're not a virgin if you've done other things. But yeah, without penetration, I can tell you that being a virgin has just like 10% of the job. Like, okay, yes, if you get married, you will not be able to compare. You will not have any basis to be comparing your partner with your previous partner because you had only one partner. So it makes your sexual intimacy great. Agreed. But that's just like 1% of the whole marriage thing. Marriage is full of other things. <laughs> It's full of other things. The fact that you're not even going to be having sex every day is not that deep. Like, there's so many other things in my Even if you're having sex every day in your marriage, it, there's so many other ways that couples bond. But yeah, being a virgin tells of tells of a person's character. And we have to say that it tells that a person has a level of discipline, right? Yeah, this may be an unpopular opinion, but yeah, I just said that, okay, so if you're a virgin, I'm encouraging you, I'm not saying that, go ask this one, just because God will not give you a good man, no, but I'm just saying that if you want to be a virgin, if you want to, you know, keep yourself for God, if you don't want to tell lies, don't want to do certain things, don't do it for this reward mindset, doing good deeds so that you can be rewarded, this mindset can really affect you as a person, and if you carry on that mindset with everything that you do as a believer, you're going to have a sad walk with God because the fact is the fact happened in this life. We're living in a falling world. So yes, sickness will come. Disease will come. Your job is not to start saying, oh God, I pay my tithe. Oh God, I do this, I do that. Why will I be sick? No, in that instance, the believer stands in authority and declares against such things. Not to start crying like Job. That's the difference between the believer and Job, the new covenant believer and Job. But it's sad that a lot of Christians we draw inference from the book of Job to say that, oh, God gives and God takes. But there's so many other lessons to learn. Number one, to learn from the book of Job is that Satan is responsible responsible for death, for evil, for sickness, for all these things happening. It is not God. Another thing to learn is that the, the, the friends of Job kept, kept telling Job that, oh, you must have committed sin. That is why this is happening to you. And Job was saying, no, I did not commit sin. I'm a righteous person. 
it sounds like self-righteousness yeah <laughs> but like it just tells us that yes sin is not why things happen to people we live in a fallen world another part is that job was even responding to his friends saying that see even bad people bad people and they don't fall sick they don't have troubles god is unjust <laughs> that's what job said if you've read the book of job well that is what he said and then god comes out to say that listen towards the end god comes out to say that i am a just god okay who makes the sun rise in the morning who feeds the birds in the sky who does this i mean god was boasting about himself i said all that to say that you know Things happen in this world and we are not like Job. We are not Job. We are a new covenant. Believer. We are in Christ. And so we can stand and enforce our rights. Okay. So in that vein, I'm saying that, you know, as a believer, you should not be doing things for reward. Okay. You should do things because they are right. You should do things because you are doing it because you are a believer. You are doing it because you know God. There are many believers we've been indoctrinated with this reward and punishment uh, mindset that our whole Christianity is based on God will reward me with this and God will punish me if I don't do this. And that's how it, it reflects in everything we do. In our fasting, in our praying, in our studying, in the way we relate with other people, in how we view sin. That being said, it's now a case of why shouldn't, why shouldn't you have been with the man? You shouldn't have been with the man because scripture says so. So whatever you are doing, do it because scripture says so. Not because your parents said so. Your parents said so because scripture said so simple they say you should not be with him because the scripture said it scripture said that be not unequally yoked so i think having a good mindset about why we do what we do is such an important thing and i think that every believer should really know why we do what we do why do you pay tight why do you fast why do you pray you know people have said that oh if god has utmost you know intelligence god knows the end from the beginning why pray <laughs> You know, these conversations are something we should have. They are not, it's not bad to ask these questions so that you can get answers. Right? So, dear poster, your parents said you should not go for him because that's what the Bible said. Okay? Bible says that. Bible typifies in marriage setting, the husband as Christ and the wife as a church. So, if a man is not in Christ, how can he lead you as Christ? How can you wash you with the water of the world? You don't want to raise a family where the children are confused. Are they going to go to church? Are they going to go to mosque? Even if they are not going to the two, they have to celebrate the two holidays, right? When your, your partner is fasting, how will you navigate that? Yes, he may say that, oh, I will allow you to serve your own God. Well, I serve my own God. But it can never be easy. If you want to grow, if you're going to have spiritual growth, you need to be going to the same place where your partner is going. You have to be growing together at a good pace. It's important. So God knows what he was doing when he said that we should not be unequally yoked. So I really hope that you understand this, that this is why your parents said it. It's not because they were evil. And I need you to know, this is the fourth point I'm going to give right now. I need you to know that your own man will come. I know it may look like, oh, the person is enjoying life, the person looks good, every other, other, other. your own man will come. Okay, yes, things will not always go the way you expect it to go, right? But God, as long as you're in Christ, be rest assured that you have victory. Right? This is not the time for you to now rush into the next relationship that comes your way. Simply because you feel like, oh, I missed a great man. Yes, maybe you missed it. And you may have missed a great man in terms of maybe the person was truly a Christian. Maybe you felt like you made a mistake. Maybe you made a bad call. You made a bad decision. You let a good man go. Fine. I'm here to tell you that God can restore. He can give you another person. Don't feel regret for, for a decision that you made. That is a good decision, in fact, in this context. <laughs> don't rush into another your next relationship because you don't want to lose this one. Please don't. Because you don't want to rush in and rush out. Marriage is a lifelong commitment, so you have to choose wisely. Right? I really, really hope that this video has really been a blessing to you. If you have been in this kind of situation where, you know, you you feel like maybe your ex got married and, you know, had a great life and you were just there, but then you have a testimony about it, leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what is your advice for this sister? You know, let's talk about it in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And yeah, I want to read it. I want to know your thoughts. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Please like this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Subscribing is free. Yes. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video.